Welcome to Ravens Over. Please subscribe to my channel. Also hit the notification bell. This way you know when I upload another video like this video. Also, I'm selling sneakers at aliveshoes.com slash two spirits. All I need is seven people to buy these sneakers and I can start a whole sneaker job in production. Without you, this cannot be possible. So I'm asking you to help me share this video if you can't buy these sneakers. There is a website down below. All you need to do is share the video, share the website, and basically I need seven people to buy these sneakers and I can start a whole production of jobs for my two spirit sisters and brothers in LGBT. You got the video. Welcome to hey. What's up? What's up? How you doing? How you been? What's going on? What's good? Are you getting it in? Somebody getting it for you? What's going on, people? Subscribe to my channel. What's going on, people? It is the day of another day of another day that we call Monday and it would have been said what's going to people hopefully everybody's doing everything as far as being safe in this world we're living in knocking down doors and making your dreams come true and practicing ignore oh, it was a hot morning I had to go take some business stuff I had to go to New York City today you know, to take us some business, I had to go to American Barston School, which is in New York City now. The one in um, Little Falls, it closed down, and I kind of want to get my license renewed as far as up to date, um, as far as 2019, so I had to go get it renewed and stuff. I didn't have to get it renewed, but I want to get renewed with a new name, you know what I mean? So I want to get that taken care of, so I went over there and I got the name um, taken care of. So, you know, when I go on jobs and stuff, as far as bartending, you know, um, I could go back and, you know, the, 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 the license match the name with the license and driver's license, stuff like that. I like everything to fit, you know, the person I once was is in the past, I don't need to bring all that. You know, you gotta have things to add up because you gotta say one name here, another name here. So it took us far as that, you know, with the Supreme Court got the name changed legally, stuff like that, what is, what it is. <sighs> got lost going to New York, it's so funny, I get lost so easy in New York, it was so hot. Now, I was dressed, if you go on Instagram, you can see I was dressed, I had my shoulder open and stuff, I was showing a lot of boobies, but the thing is that it was so hot, like last night I became really hot, so um, I got up this morning, I was like, I'll put on something really thin, because I wanted, you know, be cool, but I ended up being hot anyway, I was like sweating, maybe it's because I got this uber lot here, and it was funny because I was thinking to myself, with this hair, I was like, I'm going to take it out when I get home, but go short. This is how my hair look under this weave. You know, my hair underneath is blonde, I'm going to take it out. And then I thought to myself, okay, whenever you're stressed out, baby, you take your hair out, you change your hair. If you ever want to come out, I have so many hairstyles. I go from black to blonde, to blonde, back to black, to, to curly, to, to straight, to, to long, to short. Oh, I'll be stressed out. Whenever I'm stressed out or something's about to change my hair. Now, when I was walking, I was like, oh my God, I got to take this hair on get home. And I was like, you know what? For 11 years, you have hit yourself. This is the look of me on the train. I'm, okay. I've hit myself for 11 years. When I say that to me, I walked around with a ponytail in my head. I would buy the hair, and people would be like, why would you buy so much, spend so much money on hair, only to put it in a ponytail? I would buy the hair, pull the hair really tight, just in case somebody wanted to fight me. I made it feel it real tight that you couldn't get a grip off of it. Because I always felt this, so I had to stay ready, so I had to get ready. If somebody came up on me, I didn't want to say, wait a minute, let me put my hair in a bun, and you know, and it started cracking, I could just reach. And it's sad because 11 years, think about that, 11 years, I stayed incognito. I shared with you before a lot of clothes that I wore, um, doing videos, I did not wear it outside like this. I didn't wear it outside only because I always stayed ready because of the girls that are like me being murdered on the street. And I always felt like I had to be prepared for something that, you know, for something that happened. And like someone said, don't pull that to you. It's not like I try to pull something negative to me, you know what I mean? But they always say you don't have to look for trouble because trouble will find you. And I didn't want to be the kind of person that would be sitting there looking all fabulous and the hair all flung up and, and earrings. And here he is showing up or she is what kids can be showing up and I'm not prepared. So always stay prepared. But thank God for black women because at the end of the day I saw seeing them on Instagram and what else you want to ask them. To Bitch, you don't ask to touch my hair. You got a problem touching my hair? Like they just went for it. So I love you, my black sisters. 
You know, the thing about it is, I always think we learn by examples and stuff. And I'm not the kind of person, like, I've been this way for like 12 years now. Um, you know, and it's, it's been a little bit of a struggle and stuff. And being the kind of person I have been, and I think me doing the murders and stuff, I really think it has a lot to do with it. Also, for the fact that I've almost got raped seven times, I feel as though it's kind of damaged me mentally. And by myself not healing or taking care of the problem, I just brought it with me. Okay, next time I'm going to be prepared. The majority of assaults are not reported to the police. Only 230 out of every 1,000 assaults are reported to the police. That means about three out of four go unreported. One individual of college age, two female students, 20% report female non-students, 32% report the elderly, 28% percent reported members of the military 43 percent of females victims and 10 percent of male victims reported but a lot of times nothing's never done so a lot of times they feel like why even bother you know, and some many people say well what did you do to get raped what was you doing was you out there on a stroll no i was not on a stroll i wasn't by the time it used to be a um, performer but go do drag <laughs> His heart being me, his heart being me, be me. His heart being me, his heart being me. You put your drag bag, most girls like me understand say you got a drag bag and you got these shoes and everything in this big bag. And your other bag is carrying your pocketbook and you carry your bag like this. Now, if you think about it, I'm walking to the show about to perform. If girls out of strippers know what I'm talking about, you got your, your performance bag, you got your pocketbook, and you walk up. Both of your hands are occupied. All thing a man can do is just hit you in the face and start ripping your shit off. You don't give a fuck. I mean, the thing about it is when God was trying to rape me and shit, he had no protection on. His dick was hard. He didn't give a fuck. He wanted me to fight back. The whole theory of it is to beat me the fuck up, make me bleed, and then stick his dick inside of me and come at me. It is what it is. It didn't happen. Thank God. God has been with me and for the girls who have been raped. My God, God bless you because I know you wanted to tell people. And I know you felt like you should have. But at the end of the day, I know you're struggling. I need your pain. Because at the end of the day, people don't never believe us when we tell these stories. Somehow, we have to have on something. Somehow, you have to do something for that poor little innocent man to rape you. So a lot of girls do not come forward. That's even like the thing of Bill Cosby going on. Whether y'all realize it or not, these women are not. They ain't going to sit back and just allow us. Okay, yeah, somebody going to say, well, they're lying, they're lying, because you've never been a rape victim. If you have a child that's a daughter, or have a son that comes and says they raped me and stuff like that, we need to see how the, the conversation changes when it's you or your child. Some people don't think that the girls got raped something like that, because you could donate, you probably raped with your damn self. But anyway, this is the thing. I told myself, as of now, I'm not going to be hiding myself. I'm going to stand in my truth, full frontedly, whatever it is, if it is, I'm going to practice ignore. I'm not going to be fist fighting anyone. Whatever they want to call me, so be it. Let it be whatever they feel they need to say. So be it. I don't care. I'm not going to answer to you because what you're saying to me is not talking to me. It's talking to somebody else because I really don't care. But, you know, a lot of times I think the fear is in fear of ourselves. I think a lot of things I've built in my mind was going to take place. It did not happen. But in my mind, of the girls that have been like me, that's been murdered, they live the same life that I've lived. They've been, most of the girls did exactly what I did. You meet a guy, you bring him home, you get murdered. I brought guys home that I just met and stuff, and I'm thinking, it's no biggie. A lot of times, the way the world is moving out, everything is moving very quickly. You go on, on dating lines, go on dates with the websites or the app sites, and, hey, what's up, how you doing, you cute, you want to chill, you just bring them up to the house. You know whether they got out of prison, you don't know if they got out of jail, you don't know nothing about this person, all you know he you or she cute. And we get murdered, you know. The, the gray area is real big within this world now. It's so big that it's crazy. The gray area is so big that now we plot for jobs and stuff, we don't even get the call back now. They just reply to the, um, you know, indeed, if you don't go out to the messages department, read the messages, you'll never know that they provide back to you. When your resume is sent up there with your phone number and everything up there, they don't bother to call the phone number. They decide to text you back. And if you don't reply to the message that they send you, hell, you don't miss your interview, which is me. Tons of interviews. I didn't even know it existed until I went to school last week and stuff. And it was explaining to me that, yeah, you have to check it in order to find out. You know, the people apply for, you know, uh, responded to your resume. <sighs> 
But one thing I do notice that was really sad when I realized a lot, a lot of black people, as far as my black sisters and my black brothers, we don't get dressed up no more. We just walk and exist. We don't try to look nice and put a pair of jeans and a shirt and a wedding. And it's once upon I know maybe corny is or that's corny. Why don't get dressed up? But once upon a time, we already know black people can dress their ass up. When they look at these beautiful black women. They got their dress and stuff, looking as stylish like they're going to a fashion show. And check out the men, all dressed up, just hanging out on the streets. Look how fashionable they are, or it was. Black people can dress up. Sisters can put it together. Men can put on suits and shit and not even suits, just look f fine as fuck. And we lost that. You ever notice how people feel different when they get all dressed and when a girl put on a suit, she got on heels, she look good, she got a certain feeling, you know what I mean? Then when a guy get on a suit, got on shoes, got a sting on, you know, his whole attitude, his whole demeanor, his whole presentation is totally different. It's like positive, he's popping, he's like this whole style of change. Now what we got on is what, jeans and shirt, walking out like this, and then when you're a female sister and a woman, she don't even bother to put nothing on because at the end of the day, she may send out a, a message to a man that she wants to be raped. And that's not the message she's sending, but in his sick, twisted mind, if you're showing any boobies, or you show, oh, you must want to be with me. And the thing about it is that a lot of times, I don't think the guys really understand that, that when a girl don't speak back to you, it's because a lot of times when you don't speak back, it's because the man will go, well, how, you, so how you doing? He'll come up on you, want to talk to you. Next thing you know, he up in your face. I didn't even know the girls get robbed. And I'm not even talking about the girls like me, I'm talking about the cis women. Some of you can say, well, baby, what do you think? A lot of cis women have been talking to me, getting in my ear, sharing their stories with me, what they've been going through. And whether you want to deal with it or not, two spirit women, we really do have a stronger base than the cis women. Trust me, we do. We may get murdered and stuff, but it's a lot of us that come after the killers. How many times you see the cis women or the cis men going after the, um, the, the one who killed the black woman or going after the killed the black We don't really see it. We see a little news article and that it, that's it. When we see our stuff get murdered, my two spirit sisters get murdered, we diligently go after the person. Well, I know I do, which you already know. We diligently go after the person. We do blogs. We, we come on and we go after it. We go after it. We go, no, no, no. We, we become soldiers. We have an advancement as far as that we, we may be down here and a lot of other things. But when it comes to us sitting together, we really do stick together a lot more better than we realize and stuff. Especially you that are so soldiers that run and try to make sure that people get the message out and we're gonna we chase them wherever you are, we're gonna find you. And if you think about it, before a lot of us think soldiers running after these guys, a lot of these guys wouldn't even been found. But we become very strong about our opinions as far as about finding the killer. We become very strong as far as sticking together. Even we don't have our faults, we're not perfect. We do have our, uh, you know, um downfalls in life, but a lot of things we are doing which is very positive. Whether you want to realize it or not, acknowledge it, we really do go after them. There are 64,000, actually 75,000 black women that are missing, and nobody's even talking about it. When it comes to us being murdered, stuff, we go after them. There are over a million black men that are missing. They ain't even talking about it. I've talked about it and this stuff. But the thing about it is, I don't go diligently after them and stuff like um, um, we do within the transmitter community. The reason why I go after my own kind, because I am my own kind, I'm still black. But at the end of the day, when it comes to my own kind, who has to go out and stir her body just so she can eat, who has to go out and be a sex worker only so she can buy the next day, I understand that struggle. I'm in her struggle. She is the mirror image of me. I understand what it's like to go outside and sleep outside. When you're outside, become your inside. And when people walk outside, they're actually walking into your house because that's where you live. That was me. So I understand her struggles. I understand her crying. I understand her crying and that ask of God, why would you make me this one? Why would you do this to me? Do you hate me? I understand it. Why is it I'm being put out on the street? Why is the one that's supposed to support me, my own parents, are throwing me like, boy, like I'm garbage? And why they seem to support other people's children that are gay, but they won't support their own? I've been that child. I've been there. But I learned to let go and release. I learned to let go and release. And I learned to stand by my sisters and I stand by my brothers too, my trans mothers as well. And I do do stories of record to the cisgender people as well. But I do when it's adamant as far as um, when it comes to my um, trans women and trans men. Even though a lot of trans women may get on me, but I guarantee you, I'm the reason why a lot of y'all are alive. So thank you. Because even though I put that bug in your ear, you may not want to hear it, but it kept you alive. Anyway, I just wanted to share this with you on this Monday. I'm looking for your feedback. Like, subscribe, share at the top. There's an Instagram button. If you follow me, I'll follow back. Make sure I love you. And thank you for watching. Catch the read. All right. Now, come on, baby. Let's go on Instagram. Woo.
like I said before, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, this way you know I uploaded a video. At the bottom, there is my sneaker website. Basically, I'm trying to get seven people to buy these sneakers. If I can get these people to buy these sneakers, I can launch a whole new brand. Brand, and this way we could kind of get a little job going on for my two spirit sisters and brothers. You never know, without you, I can't do it. Love you. Love you.